Hello, friends. Welcome back. Exciting times going on here at More Guitars. Uh, from the barrage of videos that you've been seeing lately or will be seeing soon, you know now that we have picked up another wonderful legacy guitar line, Gretsch Guitars. And this one in particular, should I bury the lead or should I just say it right now? I'm going to say it right now. This guitar has blown me away. This is the Junior Jet Club from their Streamliner collection. This is a $300 guitar. Well, $299.99 to be exact. And you know me, I like inexpensive guitars. And uh, I can't wait to tell you about this. Now you may think, why did you do that big production at front um, with a $300 guitar? Because you can, because this guitar will do it. Uh, I, I thought there was no better way to, in my mind, take a look at a new guitar line, get a feel for their philosophy and the message that they want to send to their customers and especially their young customers, first time guitar buyers. We all know that if you're going to produce a guitar in this price range, some compromises had to, have to be made. Every guitar line has to make compromises in their entry level and their lower price tier guitars. But I think the compromises that they choose to make says a lot about the company. And that's why I wanted to take a look at this. Because I truly, Gretsch has been off my radar since, oh my gosh, probably in the 80s. The last time that I seriously looked at them, it was, it was during the period where they still had their um, PF, PAF style humbucking pickups that were, you know, very, just, they were muddy. They just weren't good. The guitars had a great feel. They did not have a good sound. But with their solid body guitars and their more modern designs, and even these in the lower price tier, they've embraced what was known during the 50s and 60s as the Gretsch sound. And we all know those from, you know, the Filtertrons and the Fultron sounds. Um, things that you heard on the Gretsch Chet Adkins and early stuff from Eddie Cochran and through George Harrison and the Beatles and all this. Well, just to jump ahead a little bit, these pickups in here, the Broadtrons, they're not a compromise. These are, I just dig them. They're, they are the highest output pickups in Gretsch's uh, current family of pickups. They have a slightly darker tone. They're very rich in the low mid range, but still have a very clear bass and a really crisp and smooth high end on them that I'm just digging. You heard a lot of it, you know, uh, in that intro. And I was running through my Helix uh, just so I had a selection of amps and I could get a variety of sounds and effects out of it. We're going to go through it clean through our um, Mesa boogie back here that we've got, the Fillmore. But let me tell you about this. Okay, first of all, where did they make the compromises? I can tell you that they did not make it in the feel. Uh, they did not make it in the finish of the fretboard. This is a bound fretboard, by the way. Uh, 22 medium jumbo frets. Fret ends are smooth and well polished. Uh, out of the box, the relief on this, the truss rod was perfect. Uh, I did adjust the intonation slightly on it. Everything else, uh, it came out ready to play. And, you know, our, obviously our guitar techs, before this would get into your hands, they'll go through it and do their custom setup like they do on all guitars. Even though this is, you know, $299, you're still going to get the full Moore Guitars custom setup treatment. But let's talk about the materials here. Uh, we have a NATO body and neck, and that's not the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, although, you know, good guys, for sure. But uh, 
It is a type of wood, and I guess the reason that it was unfamiliar to me, almost every manufacturer refers to it as eastern mahogany. And I was looking it up, uh, and luthiers seem to think it is a very fine, uh, strong, and stable wood for guitar building. Laurel fretboard, and again, with these new fretboard materials, if they are finished well, I dig them, and they did a great job on this. Um, I'm finding the more I play on the laurel fretboards, they are very, very similar to rosewood. And it is a bolt-on neck on this guitar. That, as well, may have been a very good choice. It all, obviously, it is a cost-saving measure when it comes to construction, but bolt-on necks typically give you a little bit of separation between the attack and the sustain of a note, a little bit more snap, um, and I can hear that on here. We've got a uh, synthetic bone nut. We have the compensated wraparound tail piece on here. Master volume, it still takes me a bit to get used to this. Gretsch, uh, almost all of their guitars have a master volume control that is on the lower horn. This has a single tone control that's shared by both pickups. Neck profile on here, it is what they call a thin U. It is a neck that reminds me of a modern rock player's guitar. Uh, very familiar carve. When you put it in your hand, you're going to say, okay, yeah, I get it. Really easy to get around on. 12-inch radius on here, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale. Um, and the tuners, when I looked at uh, the specs of the tuners, they are listed as die-cast tuners. Where is the compromise here? Well, probably in the tuners. Perhaps in the lifespan of the guitar, but I think you would say that about any guitar in this price range. What has kind of set me in the mindset about where I'm excited about every Gretsch guitar that's going to come through the doors, they know that the people who buy this are primarily going to be first-time users. It's obvious who are the primary customers for this. I feel that they went to great lengths to show them that they took care in the construction and the finish of the neck. It feels great, it's fun to play, and it sounds just killer. Let's get, let's get into it here. I'm gonna run it just through our, um, our Mesa Fillmore back here that we use for most of our demos, so I think you'll have a good reference point. And I think you'll see what I'm saying about the tone. Let's start on the bridge pickup here. I mean, I think you hear, hopefully, what I'm talking about here. The mid-range in this is just, it's a very, very nice voicing for me. Uh, very rich and warm on the bridge pickup here. And I've got pretty much all the controls just straight up at noon. I'm not hyping anything on the amp. And... With each attack of the pick, you get, and I think a lot of it comes from the bolt on neck, you, you hear a, a, a thump. It's a very, it's not a bright pick attack, but you can hear some low end oomph behind it. Something I really like. Um, I'll go through the high gain settings as we go through each pickup so you can hear a little bit how these sounds are going to hold up with that as well. Okay. That 
it's, I dig it, I dig it. You, you hear me say this all the time about the guitars I like, and, and I like this one. Okay, let's move to the neck pickup first. Both of them together? Oh, hold on. Let's listen to a little bit of gain on this neck pickup real quick. say this is reminiscent with high gain of uh, another guitar that has a junior at the end of it. That's a big plus for me. Okay, take a listen to both pickups together here. And just quickly, I'm going to roll the tone down. $299 guitar. This may be my favorite guitar I have ever played in that price range. It says a lot about the company. It says what they think about their first time buyers, about the qualities they feel are important for a new buyer when they touch a Gretsch guitar for, for, for the first time. I got a lot of respect for this company right now. I cannot wait to see what else we get in. Y'all, Give the guys here at More Guitars a call about this guitar or any of the others in the Gretsch lineup or any of the wonderful guitars that you see on our website. These guys are the experts in every brand they sell. They are as excited about having Gretsch guitars as I am. This is Keller. Get your hands on this. Thanks for joining me this time. Y'all continue to stay safe, and we'll see you next time.